now at 6 o'clock. There is growing concern as the search intensifies for this missing University of Portland student. We're worried that he's not safe. What we now know about his disappearance as family and friends mobilize search efforts. Also breaking overnight, lights out in California. Power companies across that state are cutting electricity to millions of people as powerful winds and dry conditions threaten to turn even a small spark into a raging wildfire. Plus, call it a $75,000 mistake. It's just money spent it's foolishly. Why the city installed speed bumps in North Portland, then had to rip them out just months later. And if you truly believe that time is money, maybe you'd be willing to pay someone to hold your spot in line. Well, there's actually an app for that now. Nina shows us how it works in a new Sunrise 60. It is a packed 60 minutes of sunrise here in the six o'clock hour. Let's get it started right now. Let's get it started on your Wednesday morning with a live look at downtown Portland from our Wells Fargo Skycam. A chilly morning out there. <laughs> Temperatures in the upper 30s all across the metro area. At mm. least it's clear out though, right? And it's Finally. supposed to be yeah. nice. Um, so grab yeah. a jacket, but I'm okay with that. Yeah, good morning. Happy Wednesday, guys. So I'm trying to alert people to the, the cold temperatures. You guys are like, like it's gonna but be it's sunny. sunny. It's, it's okay. going to be sunny. beautiful <laughs> right now. It is chilly right now, but it will go on to be gorgeous outside. Good visibility from the Wells Fargo camera. Here's our bus stop weather. We're going to go on average 36 degrees at 8 o'clock throughout the area as a whole. So kids will want a coat. By lunchtime, the sun will feel great but it will still be about 53 and the breeze might be cool from the northeast. We will try to get up to 60 today. It might be being a little optimistic. Here's Chris. All right, let's try to push that speedometer up to 60. No, can't. Well, maybe you can do it right now. South on I-5. This is a live look behind the wheel of drive eight. Photojournalist Dave Angier rolling through uh, North Portland right now. That drive is still looking OK. The drive over on the east side, though, bunching up on the Banfield guys so far. No major unexpected delays. OK, thanks, Chris. Our top story this morning. New details in the search for this University of Portland freshman. 18 year old Owen Klinger was last seen on campus around 730 Sunday night. This surveillance photo shows what he was wearing at the time. Owen told his roommates he was going to a lacrosse team meeting but never arrived. Bank records show he withdrew money from an ATM Sunday night and his phone also went dark that evening. Owen's mom says he always stays in touch, so not hearing from him is unusual. He was really doing well. Um, our exchanges with him, as I said, over the weekend and this fall have been really positive about his um, on-campus life and activities that he was joining in on campus and he was looking forward to fall break. Owen grew up in the Northeast Portland area, so he knows this area. Friends and loved ones are posting flyers all around town. So if you've seen him or if you know anything, call police. Here's another one of our top stories this morning. A Mercy Corps board member has resigned and the CEO is now apologizing in the wake of a bombshell investigation by the Oregonian. And that reports that co-founder Ellsworth Culver sexually abused his daughter for years and Mercy Corps knew about it and did not act. The Oregonian reports in the 90s Culver's daughter disclosed the abuse that had happened when she was a child. The Oregonian's investigation details how Mercy Corps investigated those claims, eventually decided that Culver would remain in senior leadership there. The board member who led that investigation, Robert Newell, has now resigned. Current Mercy Corps CEO Neil Kenny Geyer said he's requested an independent review of what happened and in a statement he wrote in part, the details of sexual abuse allegations made against Mercy Corps' late co-founder Ellsworth Culver in the Oregonian are horrific. Had I known this information when I joined Mercy Corps as CEO in 1994, Ellsworth Culver would not have remained at the organization. When Ms. Humphrey reached out to Mercy Corps in 2018, we had an opportunity to right a wrong. Instead, he says, we failed with her. We failed her on her response. And we should be commended now, or she should be commended, that is, for her courage in bringing all these issues to us. We did not do enough to listen to her at that time. We added to Ms. Humphrey's suffering. And for that, he says, I am deeply sorry and profoundly apologetic. 
Now to a new development on the car prowler in Beaverton caught in the act by a dash cam. You may remember this video and that guy's reaction. Well, now he's in custody. Trayvon Harrison turned himself into Beaverton police, and it turns out that Harrison is also wanted for a shooting back in June in southeast Portland. After he was cited for breaking into cars in Beaverton, Portland police booked him on some much serious charges, including attempted murder. A 10 year old boy was hit and killed by a truck while riding his bike in Vancouver yesterday. Witnesses say that little boy rode directly into the path of the pickup. This was yesterday morning at Northeast 167th and 9th Street. The boy lived in that area. The truck's driver stayed at the scene and is cooperating with the investigation. A fire gutted an auto wrecking shop in Gresham yesterday morning. So this is a look from Sky 8 from above and you can see the roof of that building collapsed. Dozens of cars were burned. It happened near the intersection of Southeast 190th and Division. Gresham Fire doesn't think there is any major environmental hazard here. Initial reports indicate that a tank inside the building caught fire. In national news, President Trump escalating the battle over impeachment. The White House is telling congressional Democrats it will not cooperate with their inquiry. The announcement came hours after the State Department barred EU Ambassador Gordon Sondland from testifying before Congress. Sondland was among those texting in August about how the president wanted Ukraine to launch an investigation into the Bidens. Democrats are now issuing a subpoena for Sondland to appear next Wednesday. A new NBC Wall Street Journal poll shows 55% of Americans support some form of impeachment investigation, but 49% of those polled oppose immediately removing the president from office. Time now for your morning rush and starting this morning, nearly a million homes and businesses in Northern California could have their electricity shut off for days. Pacific Gas and Electric says it will cut power in 34 counties to prevent power lines from sparking wildfires. Fire weather watches are spanning the state. It is super windy down there. There's a lot of low humidity creating the potential for rapidly spreading fires. Turkish forces say they are ready to launch an offensive against Kurdish fighters in northeastern Syria. The Kurds have been allies of the U.S. in the fight against extremist groups like ISIS. On Monday, President Trump abruptly pulled U.S. troops from that region. The Kurds say they're facing an ethnic cleansing and accuse Trump of allowing it to happen. Hong Kong's chief executive is warning she might have to call in the Chinese military if these violent protests continue. Clashes between demonstrators and police flared up in recent days over a ban on face masks. Police say more than 200 shops and public utilities have been damaged since Friday. The number of migrants stopped at the U.S. southern border is down for the fourth month in a row. Customs and Border Protection says 52,000 people came to the border in September, down from 144,000 last May. More than 45,000 migrants are waiting in Mexico while their asylum claims are being processed. That's your Morning Rush. Hey, the Blazers preseason opener played out last night, not at Moda Center. They played this one at Memorial Coliseum. They took the court at their old home to mark the start of their 50th anniversary season. So I'm thinking this was the best throwback of the night. Who's that on the side? Is that Dr. Jack? No, that is current head coach Terry Stotts. That's fun. He says he wore the suit uh, last night and bought it from a secondhand store in Seattle 22 years ago. Wow. What about the shoes? What about the shoes? Yeah, the shoes are classic too. All that <laughs> certified vintage, my friends. Uh, now the final score last night was Denver 105, Blazers 94. We don't care about a preseason loss though. We just care about the fact that this team is now 50 years old and the fans really got to enjoy that celebration last night. Uh, they play again against Phoenix on Saturday. Another preseason contest. Regular season starts in a couple of weeks. And there's oh. Bill Shonley. He coined yeah. Rip City yep. in that building. building. Just so much so cool, cool history in there. So it's good to have him back. Yeah. I kind of wish we'd do I, I get it. It's the 50th we anniversary. Should do it every year. We should do it every year. I this totally is fun. Agree. Or a couple yeah. of games there throughout the season. I just want to see yeah. Stotts in that suit again. <laughs> you I might see him it. in that suit in the Western Conference Final. Yeah. Again this do year. It. it could be a lucky suit. <laughs> it could be a lucky suit or lucky shoes.